basically the one thing we did together because my dad um, never really practiced religion and my mom, because of our um, their jobs, they ended up taking us out to Avon, Indiana. And there's not a shul within an hour. You have to go to Carmore, Zionsville. You know, northern Indianapolis is where all the Jews live. And west, west of Indianapolis, um, pretty apathetic towards religion all, all together. Just some hicks. Um, favorite <laughs> band, Nickelback and Kenny Chesney, to get a feel for what Avon, Indiana really is. <laughs> That, that being said, I was really proud when I was little, bringing the menorah to school, and I was like, look at this holiday, look what it is, I'm Jewish, but I really didn't know like, what being Jewish was. I was surrounded by a bunch of Christians, and they did, thought I was an alien, poking a stick at me, and then as I got older, they, they respected it at that time. They thought it was cool that there was a different holiday other than Christmas. They really did not know in Avon, Indiana, so... I, it was cool to enlighten people when I was six years old. And like growing up, I did that every year. It was just really Hanukkah and bringing up Pesach and like talking about Passover with them. And that was just a really cool experience to like bring up Jewish history and some of the holidays. But that was the extent I knew too. Like that was all I knew. So as I got older, um, people started making Holocaust jokes. My, there were swastikas on my locker in middle, middle school, I remember, which was really tough because I was like, why am I proud to be Jewish? I only know about a few of the high holidays, and that's about it. What is the incentive for me at this point? We always need an incentive, right? And I didn't, I didn't see it being in middle school. There wasn't, there wasn't somebody for me to speak with. There wasn't a rabbi nearby. Um, all I had were some friends who were supportive, and they're like, you should be proud of your identity and who you are. But I started suppressing that. People would ask me, by the time I was in high school, I started saying I was agnostic. I'd even bring up being Jewish, and I, I was, I was, ha I was fine doing that at one point. I, and I started thinking more and more though, and I was like, I'm not fine doing this. I'm guilty, and I wanna, I don't wanna be the one who ends my family history, my family lineage right here. I can bring something great and keep on going. And so when I went to Indiana University, I met Rabbi Yaakov Hoffman, if anybody knows him. I uh, went to UC Santa Barbara. You know Rabbi Yaakov? Of course. And, um, <laughs> great guy, great guy. Very chill. California vibes from UC Santa Barbara. And it, just, just a good dude. A real study. And um, that being said, I started meeting with him once a week. And I wanted to learn more about Judaism and revitalize, like, re catalyze this new spirituality for myself when I got to Indiana University. I wanted to go into something. I wanted to look into my roots look into my history, figure that out. I wanted there to be an incentive again. And I realized, I forgot to say though, right before I went to college, I lived, it, it was the summer of high school right before college, that transition. I lived with my grandpa. I wanted to get out of Avon, Indiana. So I went to upstate New York, Saratoga Springs, started going to synagogue at um, Share um, Tefila, and I started going with my uncle and my cousin so my cousin, Pam Polachek, one of the most inspirational ladies I've ever met, and I wanted to touch on her for a second, She's quadriplegic. She was going to Georgetown University, like my friend Ari here, studying um, political science, the go-to. And um, she found out when she was 22, well, she didn't find out what, what happened, but at 22, um, she um, was paralyzed from the neck down, and like her career was over in terms of like going to college she had to go back home she was in the hospital for a year and she didn't really have anything for her at that point and she went back and went to her roots and it was Judaism she's um the head of the congregation there now like helping out with organizations and helping get people there and expose like what's going on at the local shul and I found that so amazing that she can't even move and she's still doing more than most people out there and she's leaving an impact and that's what got me thinking about going to Israel she's like I can't go Elijah basically due to my condition like I'm not gonna get out there and she's like you should go you have you have that drive you have that spirit and she's like I know it would be for you and so that really got me thinking I was like oh, I'm so I'm really secular and it's not, it's not gonna be my thing. I don't wanna be with a bunch of Jewy people and like hanging out with them, wearing the kippahs and stuff. I was like, keeping kosher. I was like, that almost sounded like a burden on my back. I was like, do I, I'm being somebody who I'm not. But 
I, I thought about it more and more as like, wow, it'll really be an experience, a fresh perspective. I'll get to see, I'll get to see a new life here and I, really something abstract that I wasn't used to. Indiana has always been comfortable for me. I kn I've always known what I've been doing and it's been, t it's been very easy. But after talking with Pam, my cousin, and her drive, seeing her um, at Shabbat, Shabbat services and just how she knew every single word and just how into it she was in that spirit, I knew there was something deeper, and I felt it. And um, I don't know why things happen. I don't know if everything does happen for a reason, but there are. she did influence me, and I'm here right now. And I think there is a reason why I am here, and I'm on this stage. And thanks to her, I started meeting with Rabbi Yaakov. So I wanted to say that was like the catalyst. That's what got me into that. And he was just like, check out Thrive, and it's a Jewish organization here, and look into that, and you'll go on some cool trips, and check out Hebrew University. He said, I really think it's for you. I was like, nah, nah, that's not my thing. I was like, I'm going to go to Amman, Jordan, and study Arabic. <laughs> and so a week, week, week before admissions were supposed to go in for study abroad, I was signed up for Amman, Jordan. And I talked to Rabbi Yaakov one last time. He seemed a little disappointed, but he's like, oh, but he's like, oh, you're going to do great there. And um, I thought more and more about Pam and what she had said about um, me going to visit the wall and going all throughout Israel because I talked about birthright to her because I went just this past winter. And so the time that I'm talking about now, it's around February. I, I, is it February? Yeah, it was around that time, getting ready for the study abroad here. And so it was like mid-February, but right before I went on tag lead, I was just amazed by the whole experience. But I was like, I really want to live it somewhere different. And so I ended up coming to Israel. And I made the decision like 10 minutes before I could. And I'm here right now. And I'm just like so thankful from the beginning of like, facing some anti-Semitism in Avon, Indiana, to here and being proud of who I am. But the thing was, I even thought about it yesterday. Um, I was in my Arabic class, my Arabic class, and Suha Mayusted um, said, Anta Yehudi, and I like held back for a second. And I wish I never did. I'm so proud of being Jewish. And I was like, what the hell was I doing? Like, mm -hmm. I am so damn proud of being Jewish. And I want everyone to know that. And I wish I didn't hold back for that one second. I wish I said something. <laughs> just like an instantaneous response because that's what it should have been that's what it really should have been and that's a little bit of my story I just made this up in the past hour so thank you for listening yeah.